It didn't listen to me. It walked out of the thicket. It turned around and looked at me. They looked up, and in this tree, there was a monkey man. And the monkey man jumped down out of the tree and started running away. And suddenly, they're right in front of the car. He slams on the brakes and manages to stop. And he's skidding because it's not quite, you know, um, gravelling. And for literally for about a second and a half, they just stood there because they don't know where to go. And you tell them panicking, they're like roof dropping. Their 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 face is like twitching. Bigfoot Society. This is your host, Jeremiah Byron. Every week I talk to different people in the cryptozoology field. You never know who's going to be on next week. If you'd like to sponsor the show, head on over to patreon.com forward slash the Bigfoot Society. You get access to a ton of things there, including a close-knit cryptid community on Discord where you can connect with like-minded cryptid researchers and enthusiasts, weekly bonus content, the ability to hang out with each week's guest after the main show, exclusive merch, and much, much more. This week's episode, I talked to a new friend, Rod Nichols, from Bear County Bigfoot. Uh, this is a very interesting episode about the uh, Bigfoot that are in the San Antonio, Texas area, and a lot of interesting information about stick structures that we haven't really gotten into before on the podcast. So definitely sit back, relax, uh, enjoy this fun chat with Rod Nichols from Bear County Bigfoot. All right, Bigfoot Society, I got a uh, another episode for you, this time with a new friend, uh, Rod Nichols from Bear County Bigfoot, down in the, the heart of Texas in San Antonio. How's it going, sir? Doing good, man. How are you? Oh, dude, I, I'm excited to to talk to you ever since uh, we were talking earlier that uh, a mutual friend of ours, uh, Aaron from Hey Strangest, was like, man, you got to have Rod on because I just talked to him and uh, he, he's a good dude to talk to about Texas yeah. and Bigfoot. So I'm excited to talk yeah. to you. Yeah. But uh, man, uh, let's, you know, let's get right into it. Uh, before we do, um, is there anything else that, you know, uh, our listeners should know about you. You know, you're a Bigfoot researcher in the San Antonio area of Texas. Uh, any other things to set the scene that that's important? So one thing that I, I like to tell everybody up front is that um, I, I haven't had an encounter. And, mm. and I'm, I'm never going to mislead anybody into thinking that I have. Um, totally. Now, now it, <laughs> with, that, with that being said, I've had questions of like, well, would you like to see uh, a, mm. a Sasquatch or a Bigfoot. Um, and my answer to that is, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I don't know. Because here's the thing, you know, a, a lot of um, a lot of the encounters that I've that I've that I've uh, read about, uh, heard about various podcasts, things like that in, in Texas, uh, you know, the, the majority of, of these encounters are aggressive. And, um, and, and that's just kind of, what I've I've been reading and what I've been yep. uh, 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 checking out uh, for the past four or five years, you know, mm. and one of, one of them, one of them more notably was, you know, with uh, Wes Germer from uh, Sasquatch oh, Chronicles, yeah. mm -hmm. and and he was down in the in the big thicket. I think he was in, down in the uh, down in the uh, oh gosh, the uh, Sam Houston National Forest. Okay, uh, yep. and 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 he has a, a, an episode with um, a gentleman that 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 shot one out there, and wow. And, it was a crazy. So, I mean, for me, I, I'm never going to tell you like, hey, I, I've, I've had an encounter. I'm, I, right. I, I try not to mislead people at all. Um, my my soul, um, my foundation is based off of and it's kind of funny to say that, but my foundation is based off of what's called trace evidence, you know, mm. uh, you know, wood structures, uh, prints uh, and things of that nature that that um, that I find. And, and so okay. that that there it is, you know. That's very, that's very interesting. Um, you know, I can relate to that because, you know, I went on a, uh, uh, recent, uh, expedition with Tate in, um, in Iowa and it's like, you start to hear some stuff out there and you're like, or you listen to audio and you hear stuff in the audio and you're like, man, that was pretty close. And I don't know, yeah. like, how 
do I really want to see this guy right, head on right. or, you know, like it makes you, it makes you think a few things yeah, uh, differently. Yeah. yeah. It, it really does. And I think that, um, you know, if, if it happens, okay. Uh, you know, Hey, I'll, I'll deal with it as it comes type of thing. But, you know, at the same time, uh, I, you know, I, I it, it's, I'm on the fence, you know, it, you. it's kind of a, you know, I, I think you know there, there, you've you've got the side in in the Bigfoot world where you know people believe these are uh, uh, gentle giants and mm -hmm. you know, they, they 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 think they they look at them in that light and and sure. hey, that's great if that's you that's awesome right. great but right. but then you've got a, a lot of encounters and sightings where that was not the case at all that's true and, and to me I have to go with the majority you know. And mm -hmm. go okay. Uh, I and and for me, for what I've seen and what I've heard, uh, the encounters have not been good. <laughs> they get a little crazy. They get a little but, crazy. But it's it's funny because um, I get uh, I keep on coming back for more because I have to have you know I think like all of us, all of us, all of us in this world and in, in, in the Bigfoot world, the Bigfoot community, we want answers, mm -hmm. and, and, and that and that's what it that's what it's truly about. Like why, why and the how, and, and then you know we're, we're gathering our, our 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 evidence that we believe is is you know related to that creature, and then we go okay, well here's what I've got, and um you know and and for me I think what I do, I'm hoping that everything that I've documented is is just a, a piece of the puzzle that will help, um you know. Uh, bring it more to light and, and, and educate us a little bit more on the subject. Okay. No. Interesting. That, that's, that's very interesting. I want to take a few steps back and of course, ask the question that everyone uh, does usually is. So what was it, the thing that got you, like what, what set you down the trail to begin with for like being interested in, in uh, Bigfoot and things of that nature? Yeah. So uh, let me go back a little bit. From yeah. When I was, when I was a kid. Oh, sure. You know, um, I was an '80s uh, child and and, grew, yep. and also in the '90s as well, uh, and I grew up watching in in search of with Leonard yeah, Nimoy, yep. and and to me, you know, looking at that and uh, like everybody else that's that's in this community, uh, you know, Patterson Gimlin film, mm -hmm. you know, that that's that's the gold mm -hmm. standard, right? Um, but you know, with the Yeti and and the Loch Ness monster and all of that stuff, it kind of started with that, and I I. I can honestly say I've always believed, always mm. believed. I, I've never really had a doubt. I knew there was something more out there in the world. I I, I, I really did not believe that uh, in these national parks and forests where there's tons of acreage yeah. where, where they go, well, we, we've, we've, we've went through all of it and it's perfectly safe. There's, there's We're nothing, good to go guys. <laughs> there's nothing in there that's going to hurt. Yeah. In there really? Yeah. There's okay. nothing in there undiscovered. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. that, you know, that's, 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 that's a lie. If anybody's telling you that's a lie. That's I, crazy, I yeah. And even, even the wilderness parks that I go to and, and I, I, I research, you know, they, they, they haven't looked at every inch of that place. They don't know what's in there. Right. You know, so to me that opened it up for a lot uh, of, of the of why and, and is there is there stuff out there what what's going on you know but you know as I became uh, you know, in, got into adulthood I uh, I was going through a really a tough time in my life and mm. I was on I was on disability and okay. just you know <laughs> it was just it was it sucked right I hurt yeah I yeah hurt, hurt my body and things like that oh, so man. And so I, one night I binge watched uh, um, a YouTube channel called I think it was U Utah Sasquatch or Sasquatch Utah. Well, oh yeah it was uh a guy named nathan rio okay who, mm -hmm. who, uh who's no longer you know uh doing his thing anymore for whatever reason i don't know but um i watched all of his videos and and what got me was that the the evidence that he provided the the, the prints uh of uh, the encounters uh mm. and and then more notably what his thing was was the wood structures that was how he was able to um i i'm not gonna say prove but it's trace evidence. Like he thought, hey man, why is this happening here? Why is this being built over here? Is it is it people? Is it kids? So you know, it he kind of got me thinking. I watched all of his videos in one night, and then the last video that he put out was, hey, look, I'm going to show you how I find these things. Uh, some of this evidence, I'm going to I'm going to educate you. This is what mm, I do. Okay. 
I want you to go out and you tell me if it's a hoax. You tell me if I'm making this up, if, if I'm just, you know, a hoaxer or whatever. Right. Right. And so what did I do the next morning? I got up and, and I used the same uh, uh, methodology that he used. Um, and and the, the same day, the same day, I found a wood structure and I thought, oh, wow, <laughs> here's a guy in Utah showing me. Mm. Or, or showing, you know, his, 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 his channel or the people that watch the channel, you know, how, how to find these, these, these wood structures. And, and the, I guess to him, the criteria of what really would lead up to finding these things. And I followed it and I found one. And I thought to myself that, 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 that there's, you know, there's gotta be something to this. It do you really mind, is. uh, do you mind sharing exactly what it was that you, that yeah. technique you did then? Yeah. So, so here's the thing. And it's, and it's very small. If you're a hunter, if mm -hmm. you're, a, if you're a, a wilderness person, you, you, you know, this already, this is, this is, this is foundational stuff. So here's the thing. If you have a habitat that um, supports big game, mm. right? Big game. Okay. So in my neck of the woods, here's the thing that we the think the animals that we can't eliminate bears, cats. Okay. okay. Maybe a cat here and there, but it's very, very seldom, right? White-tailed deer are abundant here, okay? Mm. Um, so that's big game, right? So if you have a habitat that supports big game mm -hmm. and you have a water source that's at maybe about, I would say, four or five miles away, okay, you've got a recipe for uh, um, Sasquatch uh, evidence, mm -hmm. if you will. Okay. So, so, and, and that makes sense to me. That makes sense to me, right? If I'm an apex predator, okay, which is, I believe what these creatures are, they're apex predators, right. they're agile, they're fast, they're intelligent, they hunt. Uh, I, I, you know, I've seen things, uh, videos where, you know, that would lead me to believe that that's what they do. You're going to follow the food source, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what I ended up doing was I ended up looking at one of the biggest uh, green belt, uh, creek green belts in our uh, in, in the San Antonio area. And this Creek green belt goes in and out of the city. It goes outside of the city. And when it goes outside of the city, it goes into what's called the Edwards aquifer recharge zone, which is an underground cavern, which is where we get our water. Okay. The thing with the Edwards underground aquifer is that it's a cavern that is huge and there's really no telling how deep and what lives in there. All we know is that our water is filtered out and that uh, that's how we get our, our, our water. That's our water source, right? So what I followed was a creek called the Salado Creek. Now, historically, the, Sal the Salado Creek uh, was used by the Native Americans to get into San Antonio. It was like their highway, okay? Uh, fur trappers used it to get into the city, things like that, right? Mm. Um, so that told me if Native Americans were using this as a highway to hunt, to follow the food source, an apex predator would do the same thing. Okay. So here's the thing. If I wanted to be concealed, if I didn't want you to know where I was at, right off of the Salado Creek, I can, I can, I can get in there and you would never know if wow. I'm there because it's that thick. It's that lush. Okay. So to me, that made sense. That made sense. So from all the encounters and the, uh, uh, the stories that I've heard, um, you know, these things will take the high ground. Um, they hunt, um, you know, all, there's all kinds of stuff, right? They're an apex predator. So to me, if you're talking about an intelligent apex predator, this is prime. This is prime territory. Now, the whitetail go in and out of the city using that creek. It, it's in abundance. In fact, wow. sometimes the city will control the population because there's a lot of whitetail that go in and out of the city using that creek. That made perfect sense. And then about a mile and a half away from me, there's a, there's a, a, a small lake. So there's your water source. And yeah. that lake is connected to the creek as well. And then there's about three or four other wilderness parks with lots of acreage that are connected to the Salado Creek that have white-tailed deer as well. So mm. it's, 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 it's no coincidence that I've, I've been to every one of these wilderness parks that are connected by that creek and I found structures. I found prints. So 
in my mind, I'm sitting there going, I can't definitively prove that these are quote Sasquatch structures, structures or you know whatever. But why am I finding them in abundance in all of these wilderness parks that are connected by one creek green belt that goes in and out of the city? It's very interesting. Uh, and YouTube viewers, uh, you may notice I had a map up on the screen. That is so you can go to Bigfoot Mapping Project if you ever want to oh, look at up. reports. And uh, Scott is a fantastic guy. I've uh, got an interview with him earlier, too. You'll want to check out. But uh, I believe it's BigfootMap.com. Yeah. But let's break that down even more, Rod. So, like, when you're first trying, you like, you know the areas you're looking for, Bring it, break it down, you know, in simple uh, simple for me, like, how are you figuring out? Are you going to certain maps to figure out, okay, here's yes. the area where the greens, here's the area with the water sources, just a map, or how did you do it? So, what I was using was uh, my satellite view from uh, my iPhone, the mm. maps, right? Uh, I was using 3D, and then I would use uh, Google, Google Maps as well. And I would look at that creek and follow it. In and out of the city, where is it connected to, right? And what is of interest to me, okay? So now don't get me wrong. I'm not going to just walk up to any, you know, wood structure and go, oh, that's Sasquatch. Like, I, I, that, that, that's not what I do. That's not what I do. I have to connect the dots. I have to put it all together and go, okay, what do these pieces look like? Why? Are they, are they torn off? Are they cut? Uh, what, what's going on, right? There's, there's a lot of things that go into it. So, you know, uh, I I utilized the Google Maps. I utilized uh, my, my iPhone map. And then what I did is, again, was I followed that creek in and out. And so I would pin different areas that were of interest to me that I thought would be. Now, uh, here's the thing. We don't know really a whole lot, a ton about these these creatures. We don't know a lot. There's, there's, there's so much we don't know. And I think if anybody claims that they do know, I, I would question that. But here's the thing. I had to put myself in the position of a, a, an apex hunter, an apex predator. Mm. Where would I go? What would I do? Where would, you know, so, and then I'm very familiar with my area. I grew up and I had, as a matter of fact, in the area that I live, um, the, the Salado Creek runs right next to my apartment. Like literally I can. Oh, wow. Look out my window and there it is. Right. So I know I know my area. I've grown up here my whole life. So, you know, I went in and out of that area and I went past uh, kind of outside the city a little bit where it goes out into a big, huge forested area. Huge. Mm. That's where the Salado Creek ends. It goes out into a huge acreage. OK. And that is the Edwards Underground Aquifer Recharge Zone. So wherever it rains. That's where we're going to get our water. It filters through into that cavern. That's how we get our water. So to me, with using those maps, I came, well, and this is just me, my opinion. Um, I think that they go in and out and they get, they go into that big lush acreage area, that forested area. And I believe there's probably a, an underground cavern or something that I don't know about where they're residing. Dude, that would be awesome. And th yeah. that's, that's, and I'm basing this off of like boots on the ground. I, right. I've gone out right. there. Now I have, I haven't found, I haven't found the cavern or the underground, but listen, if we're talking about an underground cavern that stretches from San Antonio to Austin, that's huge. How many so miles you, is that Rod? Uh, Roughly. We're, we're talking like 75, 80 miles. Wow. Could right? be. So, so you can't tell me that, the city knows every inch of this cavern mm -hmm. underground. You don't, they don't know. They don't know. So to me, my, my whole thing, my hypothesis or theory is that they go in and out of that Salado Creek. They use it to hunt. It's, it's so perfect. The white tail are there. All the animals are there and they go back out into the big forested wooded area. I think they're utilizing some type of cave system. And that's what I believe what's going on. And then the wood structures are either markers for the territory or for where they're at. And again, this is solely my opinion. I think that some of these wood structures are used for the little ones where they put them in those little wood structures, go out and hunt at night, okay. yep. come back with their kill 
grab them and then head out to the big open area. That is fantastic. I would say a, a huge takeaway that listeners could take away from that is um, you, you don't have to rely on, you know, you're like uh, just the big full websites. You can just use your logic and look at a map. Think of your area, be like, okay, where are the creeks? What are the water yes. sources? Yes. Where are the green spaces? Where are the animals going to be? And yeah. maybe you can discover a new you know, place for yourself. Right. Just use your, your common sense. Of course, make yeah, sure you're not sense. going into private property as well. Oh, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a thing yeah. too. But. You know, it, 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 it has to make sense. I can't mm. just go to a patch of woods and go, oh, you know, a Sasquatch came through here. I, there has to be a, 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 a rhyme and reason as to why there mm. has to be safe passage passage in and safe passage out. Okay. There has to be, I can't sit there and go again to uh, an, uh, an acreage piece of land or whatever and go, Oh yeah, there's evidence. I, I, no, because if there's nothing like a Creek or a green belt or a water source where I can utilize and take that path in and out, it, it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't. It doesn't That's because, awesome. Because I've seen the whitetail every, every day in mm. and out, in and out, in and out. If you are hunting, you're going to follow the food source. It makes sense. And any, any, any animal that's a predator is going to follow the food source. Wow. There you go. Uh, I am bringing... Uh, so... Uh, never mind. So, but uh, the question I was going to ask you, uh, we had a little bit of technical difficulty. They were all good. Yeah. Um, let's take, uh, I want to be, you know, hypothetical. Let's do a hypothetical question just sure. to get some interesting info out. Right. So let's Rod, what are you thinking in your mind when you come upon a strict stick structure and you're like, okay, what am I thinking through my mind for me to say, uh, this is related to a Sasquatch verse. This is maybe someone that's into uh, primitive camping, et cetera. Sure. Are there sure. things you're looking for? So, so there's a, there's a couple of things that uh, I have to take in consideration. One is that the, the uh, wilderness parks that I go through are, uh, there's no camping allowed in these wilderness parks, none. So these are not camping parks. Okay. So that leaves only the other uh, option, which would be homeless people. Okay, now homeless people, uh, you would probably say maybe they would build a fire. There would be beer cans, maybe cigarette mm. butts, signs of human activity, right? Water bottles, empty. There would be trash. There is. I I see it every day on the way to work, right? So if there are none of those things around. Then now we're talking about something that that we may have here. Now, the other part of it is this, and this has been kind of a theme that I've um, I've, I've experienced with wood structures. Uh, I, I try not to go like inside of them and all that stuff. You know, I don't you know, I'm not trying to mess with any anything like that. But one thing that I have noticed is that there is an odor inside of these things. Oh, right. And, and a lot of it smells like it. Seriously, it smells like decom decomposing animal and, and B.O. and wet dog mixed all Whoa. together. So, so again, knowing what I know about encounters and, and people that have experienced that smell, not, not everybody experiences that smell mm. to have an encounter. I mean, it, it, it's here and there, but there's something to that, right? So, like, yeah. if, I'm, if I'm smelling this and, and, and it's a wood structure – and there's no sign of a, uh, any human activity, cigarette butts, things like that. Okay, now we've got something even more substantial. But let's take it a step further. Let's look at the pieces that these mm. things are, are, are being used to build. Now, some of them are drug from other areas that were not from that area of the park, right? The other part is that they're ripped out. Some of them have the root system still uh, uh, attached oh, to them. Wow. Okay. Now the other part of it is that some of these, some of these pieces are, we're talking eight to 12 feet more or less, and probably about six to eight inches in diameter, you know, maybe more. Hmm. Uh, so we're talking huge pieces 
huge pieces that are put together to, to form a, a structure. Now, I have to ask myself, why would a person do that? Why would a person do that? And if you're telling me it's kids, these are some strong kids. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about an army. And then some guy yeah. told me one time, uh, I posted some videos on uh, uh, on a group and some 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 photos of what's oh that oh that that's Boy Scouts and I'm like you telling me Boy Scouts picked up a 12 foot tree that's like 10 inches around and fastened it with another one to make this structure nah come on yeah it's not normal Boy Scouts come on stuff, man dude. yeah yeah, yeah. no that's no weird. no. The, 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 the diameter, the size of these mm -hmm. things, that's what really gets me. Because if you're telling me it's people, I have yet to see one person, one person putting these things together. I've been researching my areas for almost five years. I've yet wow. to see one person put, putting these things together. If it's, if it's a hoax, it's one of the most elaborate and well-planned hoaxes ever. It really is. And I'm talking about eight to 10 wood structures off the top of my head in some of my areas, you know? So to me, what is it? <laughs> what is it? Right. Something wow. with strength, something that can rip out these trees that can break these branches that are huge and put them together. But that I mean, is man. Yeah. Struggling back yeah. to the question. That's what I look for. That's what I look for. That's fantastic. information. that's the, you know, to tell you the truth, like that's some really good, solid information about what to look for. You know, you see, you see stick structures in, you know, these random shows, but like you never have that. They never go into detail. Okay. Look for this, look for this, look for this. And this right. is why, and like, that was a great, great, uh, uh, job really laying it out. Uh, thank you for yeah. that. No, um, no, no. so you, you've over the last five years, have there been, you know, what kind of evidence um, are you are you uh, finding when you're out out in your yeah. research area, if any? So, you know, may, I'm uh, I like to believe that I'm somebody that's more on the wood structure side, which mm. which I guess okay. to some people to some people in in the Bigfoot world may not make sense, but to me it makes all the sense in the world. It really mm. does. I think I think this is one of the phenomena that's overlooked. It's overlooked a lot. Right. Because everybody's trying to have that siding, that encounter. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and hey, you know what? If that's if that's what you want to do. Go, 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 great. Be careful what you wish for, because you just might get right. it. Right. But but to me, the trace evidence is is what really gets me. Uh, one of them being uh, uh, Prince. Now, the thing with Prince here in, in South Texas is that uh, our ground is real hard. It's super okay. hard super hard we have a, a a layer of bedrock uh underneath the soil it's called caliche and it's 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 pretty dense i mean it's pretty thick some limestone things like that right so the ground is real hard so if you are looking for prints it's it's kind of tough uh and and so that that's one thing i do look for now i have seen prints uh i have seen uh more or less i would say uh, I guess outline more or less the ground is so hard that I don't really get to see like something that's really sunken in. Like sure. there's a difference. Obviously there's a difference in, in soil here in South Texas and then somebody in, in Washington state. Oh yeah. That's definitely. Got, right. So, so it's a little bit different, but here's the thing. And I'm glad you asked this because uh, this past Wednesday uh, I did a casting of, of a print. I was so, Oh wow. I was, I was, Oh, uh, um, I was freaking out because that's something I don't see all the time and something that that has substantial weight made this. I don't know yeah. what I don't know what it was. It was four inches deep and about 13 inches long. And I would say maybe about five, five and a half inches at the toe box. Uh, okay. And I was able to cast it. And one thing I did is I took out the debris a little bit gently, as careful as I can. And then I put my fingers around the toe box area to feel if there's like anything as far as I would think would be toes. Right. And this is what I came up with. I actually brought it here so you could see it. Oh, so cool. This is, oh, wow. So this is it right here. Okay. Now, now I posted this and somebody said, 
well, this looks like somebody just cut this out and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But nobody understands the environment, the area here. It's hard right. ground. It's yeah. tough. This isn't like um, – now I'm going to show you another in contrast. This okay. is different. This is from Paul Freeman. This oh, cool. Is, right? This is Michael Freeman. He sent this to me. Yep. Uh, and this is – this nice. is Paul Freeman's, right? So it's a little different. You you, you could see a little bit more smooth, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit more, uh, uh, you know, d defined. Uh, there's some, if you look real close, there's dermal ridging. Uh, you can see all this stuff, right? This is different, different soil, okay? Right, exactly. This is South Texas right here. But if you look close, you can see, you can see the, the pinky toe right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, sure. You see that? Oh, that's wild. Yeah, yeah. If you look close, you can kind of see the toes a little bit, you know, right there. That's awesome. Wow. Things like that. So uh, this is some of the evidence that I try to look for as far as uh, prints. And this is this is this is not something that I that I find a lot. It really isn't. So when I do, I capitalize on it. Um, but again, to answer your question, this is the kind of stuff I look for. I also try to look for hair samples. OK, um, because some of these branches are broken off, they're torn off. And, you know, if they're going through, uh, if they're, you know, I don't know, chilling out, I don't know, hanging out, there's got to be something that may grab it. I always look for that. I have not found any hair uh, evidence, unfortunately. Uh, so the, the I rely on the prints, the wood structures. Uh, I also have left a um, one of the areas that I thought had a lot of evidence or activity. Sorry. I left a, uh, a, a voice recorder. Okay. Awesome. Uh, I hid and, yeah. and, and somebody was gracious enough to uh, 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 lend that to me. And that guy was, uh, that guy is Christopher Noel. Oh, um, sure. Yeah. He, he really kind of took me under his wing a little bit and, um, and helped me out. He would let me borrow his, his voice recorder. He would mail it to me mm -hmm. <laughs> and I would get it and I would put in, he he went through all the uh, audio and and um, we listened to some wood knocks. Oh, it was that's really cool. cool. Yeah, so I mean they they were there. Like you can hear him. Um, that's wild. One one night I uh, was using his voice recorder again and I hit it in a tree stump in an area that I thought was you know had lots of activity, and I I heard something uh, walk up, um, sit down, and it made like this. <sighs> No like way. this, like it was just sitting, you know. And then what was really weird was that it, it, I think it found the voice recorder, mm -hmm. and it was tapping. Something was tapping on it. It was oh, really yeah. weird. Like it was just making this, you know. Yeah. And, and I was like, "What is that?" But you know, I again, I, I can't prove if if it was a Sasquatch. That's but it's wild. It was something with weight that sat down, and and was checking my voice recorder out. So that's some Dude. of the stuff that I've that I've, I've had, you know, uh, that, as evidence. That is so cool. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I love that. Um, when, when, uh, you were, let's imagine, you know, you're thinking back to when you're first starting out, mm -hmm. are there things you wish that you, you knew then that, you know, now, um, as it applies to, to, you know, Bigfoot research and going out and actually doing it. You know what? I, I, I had this, I had this thing that I, I thought that I needed to go out and buy all this stuff. You know, I, you mm. know, I, had, I had to buy a thermal, I had to buy, you know, night vision. I had to buy all of these things. And, you know, then, then I can go out and I can make this grand expedition and, and there's nothing wrong with doing that. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that. Right. If you're talking about going to a national park and, and you know, you're you're with the, with somebody that is um, a lot more experienced that can show you right. some things. That's different for me as a newbie. I was looking at all this stuff going, OK, well, I need to get this. I need to get that. I need to get that. Right. And, and it really wasn't that way. Like I went out and spent this money like <laughs> I didn't need to, you know, because the truth of the matter is I was finding these wood structures like consistently, consistently. Wow. And I thought that ah, that didn't take me buying a thermal or, or, or night vision or, or you know, <laughs> any of that stuff. You know, I, I, I just needed my phone and and um, document the evidence and, 
you know, maybe give a little narrative on what I believe is happening or, you know, anything like that. but, you know, I'll tell you this though, what really brought it, I think what really made me feel like I was onto something was when I brought a wildlife biologist with me. Oh, cool. Okay. So this guy, um, a very, just a very nice man. Um, his name is, uh, John Morley. He's a, mm-hmm. a wildlife biologist here in, uh, in Texas. And, um, he, he was into the subject. Uh, he was all about it. And I took him and a friend of mine, uh, who I became friends with, uh, who has the South Texas, uh, Bigfoot research Alliance. Uh, so, uh, his name is Rick Tullis and, uh, he got a hold of me and then he introduced me to Dr. Morley Okay, and I took him to some sites and I was very apprehensive about it because I'm very, um, and not that these, these sites are mine. I don't own Mm -hmm. this land or whatever, but I kind of take ownership of it because I've been researching, I've been documenting for a long time. So I'm just not going to give up my locations like, like that, you know, just just anybody. I get that. Yeah, I get it. And and it it has nothing to do with me being a jerk or, or, you know, whatever it has everything to with me, with people not compromising all the work that I put into you know, documenting and making this stuff happen. So, but he, I took him out to some spots and I took him to one particular spot where I'd found a, a, a white tailed doe carcass. Uh, mm. And she was literally broken in half at her back. She was oh, broken wow. in half. Uh, her head was pulled off her neck and it was about three feet away. And then the head was pulled apart. The bottom jaw and the top was pulled apart. Her legs were pulled off of her body, all four, and they were spread about a few feet away. And I showed him this carcass and I said, what do you think happened here? And he grabbed the carcass and he put it together. He put the back together and there was a bow like this in the back like oh. that. And he said, hey, Rod, he said something that was strong with a lot of force broke this back and it pulled the head apart. And I'm like, homeless people? Like, I'm just trying to play devil's advocate. Like, you know, he's like, no, I don't think a human can do this, you know. So I brought him to some other structures and it blew his mind. He was sitting there going, I have no answer for this. Like, what is this? He said, this feels like, uh, uh, like, like ape activity, like primate activity, Mm. like the nesting and and some of the stick structures and things like that. So what that, that brought it, uh, 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 you know, it brought it full circle to me and, and it, it, I'm not going to say it, it really, uh, you know, I, I, I was, yeah, this is definitely Sasquatch stuff, but I'm telling you, if I bring a wildlife biologist with me and I'm showing these things and he has no answer, uh, I think I'm onto something, you know? It's, it's very interesting. I don't know how I would react if I, I found a, a, a site like that in the woods and like, yeah. you know, I mean, uh, yeah, that's hard to think of what other alternatives that could have been that could have done that, you know? Yeah. 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 I mean, he, he, and he plainly said it was, it wasn't a human that, mm. that, that broke this, this doe's back. It, there's, there's no way, unless he had like a, 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 a 10 pound hammer and chase this thing down and beat it to death, which which is not likely. Right. Yeah. Not, like, not likely. And, 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 and I can post, I, I posted all this stuff. Uh, you know, on, on, on various groups and Facebook. And one of the things was it, it's bears. And I'm like bears in San Antonio, Texas. It's not there's, a, no, not a normal occurrence for San no Antonio. Such thing. Okay. No, not such no no thing. All right. A mountain, a mountain lion. But I, I think back in 1993 was the last time I heard of a mountain oh, wow. lion sighting. So you have to go, you have to go with what, what you maybe think it, it was, I don't, I don't you know, there was a, a question that I want to tack on mm-hmm. f- that I didn't get to ask a lot earlier. So back to when you were finding the research area, did you, were there uh was there a history of Bigfoot sightings in that area at all? Or was this completely new ground? To my knowledge, it was all fresh. Oh, wow. Um, that's I, awesome. I, I, and I did, so I did some of my research, uh, because uh, I thought, well, if there's somebody out there that's researching and documenting, documenting uh, 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 these sites or, or you know whatever, I I, I want to know. Like, I want to talk to them. I want to befriend them. Like, 
like show me what's going on like i'm interested like what 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 can i do to help like what's mm. going on i i found like maybe one guy but the evidence that he was he was providing was just like oh hey this grass is laid over a sasquatch sat there i'm like okay like uh i don't think so you know i, I don't know you know what i mean it's like just 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 stuff that didn't make sense to me at mm -hmm. all it didn't make sense to me it's logically you know, it didn't and, make sense yeah and and so i had to i had to use the logic that i felt was uh uh um uh, that made sense to me again apex predator i'm following the food source i gotta have a water source if i'm a flesh and blood creature i gotta have these things that would give me a recipe for activity and then if if i've got that okay so we could have that on a patch of land anywhere, but where is the in and out? Where can I go in? Where can I go out? Where can mm -hmm. I not be seen? Where can I, where can I be concealed? All those things, the creeks and the green belts made sense. Exactly. Because they follow into the water source here. They follow, they go in and out of the city and there's two prominent creeks. One of them is Leon Creek. The other one is Salado Creek. So I went to both of them. Okay. And I found evidence. It made sense. But here's something else that's, I guess, I don't know if it would blow your mind or not, but some of the structures that I found in these wilderness parks were in, in, the, in the woods, but they were next to playgrounds. So uh, I don't know what to do with that's Okay. That's, oh, man. Playgrounds. That's a lot to unpack there. Playgrounds. So yep. I, I talked to Christopher. Okay. And I said, what, what, what do you think? And he said, well, he said, there have been some encounters and people have said that they've seen these things uh, just kind of sitting and staring at the, mm -hmm. watching the kids play. Yep. And that, and that's, that's noted that that's documented. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Dude, so it's crazy. And I thought, well, what? okay. Okay. So then I thought, well, if it's that close, then it's kids. Kids are doing this. But then I, then I look at the pieces that are that are put together and I'm like, what? you're gonna tell me a mom and a dad's gonna like like their five year old kids or eight, 10 year old kids will lift up or try to lift up these things and put them together so they can play in it. There's wow. no parent that would do that. Are you kidding me? Because it sounds like the pieces you've been seeing are very, very large. They're big, they're huge, yeah. right? And then if you tell me it's teenagers. Okay, let's go down that route. What teenager is going to get off their phone or their video games? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> and go in the woods? There's no teenager nowadays. Maybe 30 years ago, but yeah, no. in my day, yeah, because we rode oh, yeah. bikes. Exactly. We did all that stuff, right? But there's no teenager that's going to go out and lift up 10, 12 foot pieces and put them together for what? Yeah. You know? So and there if, you go. if you are more power to you because that's oh, pretty hey. cool. So, yeah, you, you know, that's yeah, awesome. You're a badass in my book. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so Rod, you're, you're five, you said five years into your research, right? More or less. Yeah. Have you thought of, you know, what is it going to take for you to feel like, okay, I've accomplished what I've set out to do? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, nobody's ever asked me that question. I think I'm just going to keep on going. Okay. Um, and here's the thing. Um, and I'll be completely honest. I, it's for me. It's it's uh, it sounds funny, but it, it's it's gotten me out. It's gotten me outside. It's gotten mm. me out mm -hmm. <laughs> walking and yep. and and uh, enjoying the wilderness, enjoying uh, the woods and and. All of those things, man, like, like uh, I look at it in that way as well. Like, you know, I, I'm not going to sit there and go like, well, once I've got one dead in my garage, I'm going to stop, you know? Right. I mean, uh, okay. But, but to me, it, it was more, I look back at it. I thought about that too, actually. And I thought, man, it's motivating me to get out and be yeah. active yep. and, and, and use my brain. Think think and, and, and try to put the pieces together. And that's the fascination. That's part of it anyway, because let's face it as, as, as Bigfoot people, we're all searching for the truth. We want to know, mm. we want to know. And Hey, I may go to my grave, never knowing the truth and that's okay. But here's the thing. I gave it everything that I've got. That's awesome. And, 
and that's that's good enough for me you know i love that oh that's good that's good have you found uh as you started to look into you know uh bigfoot in that area have you come upon any other uh maybe cryptids not bigfoot related you know maybe a person figures out you're the bigfoot guy and is like you know i don't have a bigfoot story but i had this weird thing happen the only thing i can think of and maybe it was sasquatch i'm not sure i i don't know um i was in an area and it was a it was kind of a swampy area where the water collects um and there was about i would say probably about 60 yards 60 65 yards away from me there was a, a a couple of trees and there was some like shrubs or some thick really thick grass that surrounded these trees it was like a little um i don't know like a little patch that was in this swampy area and i'm there with my walking stick just kind of looking around trying to fill the place out and um i hear something that sounded um and uh, again i think back to this all the time and i don't know what it was i, I could mm. could have been a deer i'm not sure uh i heard something that went like oh, oh, you know and, oh, and it, wow. it, it, it moved it moved and I, I i saw the grass you know kind of moving a little bit like shh. and i thought i stood there and i thought what did I just hear? Like, <laughs> like um, it was, it was so, it was so dumb. It was so stupid. Um, it was so dumb. Cause I said, I, it was like one of those things, like it was like a, like, like a comedy, like a movie where you, the guy's like, what was that? Come, come again. What? And I stood there and I heard it again. It did it twice. It went oh, oh, like really loud. And I thought, Oh, I got to leave. Like I got to go like now. Wow. I don't know what this is, but I got to leave now. And I don't know what it was, but it scared the hell out of me. And wow. I don't know if it was Sasquatch related or whatever, but, um, you know, that, that's something that's happened to me that I think may have been something else. I'm not sure. Um, I was talking to Aaron and he's, he, you know, we were talking about dog man and, yeah. and as it yep. pertains to my area as well. There's, there's, there was a, a, a noted, a well-noted sighting. Of a, of a dog man in uh, a, a little sub area of San Antonio. I think it's Converse or Universal City um, mm. back in early 1900s or something like that, oh, wow. where they'd seen this bipedal um, animal walking and, you know, with, with dog head, wow. all that stuff. And that was the only thing that I had heard. Uh, there was a, now going back to Sasquatch, there was a, a very notable, uh, uh, documentation of a sasquatch at least from the uh from the eyes the perspective of a homeless person a homeless couple uh oh. that were camping in a in a, in a piece an area that was near a creek uh that was near a, a big creek um that uh they came up uh, on that had a um a white tail in its hands and its in its arm uh Ooh. they were walking up to their tent their camp uh, and this thing was, I guess, near the camp. Uh, they saw it and they thought, what the hell is this? Then it stood up on two feet. It grabbed uh, the white-tailed deer and it, it screamed at them and, and ran off. And one of the things that they said that they, that they had, I think that they experienced was the smell. The smell was bad. It was terrible. And there's a 911 uh, a recording. Uh, the lady, the wife called 911 because she was asking for animal control. She thought oh, maybe a, 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 a monkey or a gorilla had, had, you know, escaped or I don't know, somewhere. And that's what they were dealing with. And she was describing this thing as just standing up on two feet, running off with this deer. Uh, so we've, we've got that. Um, there was another siding close by in that area. It was uh, uh, again by uh, Leon Creek. Uh, and it was a body shop. Uh, where these guys got in early to work and their body shop, the backyard where they had cars and stuff uh, faced uh, was b uh, by a forested area where that Creek kind of runs by and they saw something bipedal uh, tall and hairy running off. And mm. they called, they, I think they called uh, the police for that too as well. So we, we, we got a, a, some sightings, but I, I guess as far as, um, other cryptids, I, I don't know. I mean, the chupacabra is, you know, kind of a thing. But yeah, it's got uh, yeah, right, yeah. You know, yeah. I, I have yet to to encounter anything like that. 
Uh, I think that's more south, more south than what I'm at. Um, gotcha. But no. The uh, one story you shared is really cool because it backs up your your story personally of um, that deer being torn apart. Yeah. Because you have a you have a, a story that where they saw a, a Bigfoot carrying a deer, yep. and I mean, you could listen to the nine one one recording, and she's saying this thing had a deer in its arm, and there you go. Wow, is that on like a BFRO or? Yeah, you could look it up on YouTube. It's uh, I guess okay. nine one one phone call, San Antonio Bigfoot. You know. Oh, had, interesting. Okay, you know, yeah, yeah, totally. Um, okay. You know, we we you know so and we've we, and but not only that we've had a, you know we've had a hoaxer come through and and say that he shot one and killed it. Okay. And, and displayed the the fake dummy body. I'm not going to name that person, but you know you've got. <laughs> you've got idiots like that, you know, but here, here's the thing uh, that never deterred me from believing, never deterred me uh, from, from, from believing that these things exist and they can exist. Uh, and I think in any neck of the woods in the United States, mm. you know, I, mm -hmm. I think so. And one thing I do believe is that I do believe they're opportunistic uh, uh, creatures. I think they dumpster dive. I've, I've heard that. Oh, uh, interesting. So, I mean, you, so you have to look at all, it's a look at all. I can't. I one thing I've tr I've really tried not to do is I've tried not to dismiss any any story or encounter. Never, never. If somebody's telling me something in confidence, and and they they know that what they've seen and it's far off from other encounters, I can't dismiss it because mm. here's the truth of the matter: we don't know what these things are. That's we have a good no point. idea. Yep. And not only that, I'm not going to call myself an expert. I don't know because <laughs> I don't have one of these things in my garage to ask questions or, or examine. I don't know, you know, so mm. I have to, I can't dismiss any, any stories or encounters of no matter how outrageous I think it might be. I think uh, that's, that's a good lesson to, to keep an open mind because we don't have the, you know, we don't have the written down, you know, science hasn't been able to write down this is what this creature does or can do or is made up of. Um, uh, before we before we end for the uh, episode, um, do you think what what's your thoughts on? Do you think it will take uh, a body for science to to finally accept Bigfoot or or Absolutely. what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, and now again. Um, I don't know if this will upset anybody that wants to preserve uh, the creature. Um, the only way we're going to find hard, ev only way we're going to have hard evidence is, is if we present a body. Now, mm. it, the, the other part of it is uh, keeping the government out of it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's uh, the thing, dude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It would, it would take, it would, this is what it would. And this is again, my opinion, it would take a third party entity to take that body and, and it would have to be somebody that's well noted, well respected and, and maybe the medical or scientific community to examine and confirm uh, DNA, hair, everything. It would take a body. That's the exactly. only way. That's the only way. But the thing is, is that uh, that stuff just seems to disappear. Yeah. And you know? people seem to disappear with it. But I will say if people are, you know, you're listening to this and you're like, you know, I'm not sure if I, I get that. I will tell you this. Read this book, Valley of the Apes by Michael Michael Mays, yeah. uh, Area X guys. And yeah. after reading that book, I was like, okay, I get the whole, I get the thinking now about it's going to take a body. I totally get it. Yeah. It changed my thinking, dude. And I'm actually going to be talking to Michael next week. I'm excited for oh, it. It's nice. going to be an awesome, fun interview. Um, but, dude, it's such a good book if uh, listeners yeah. haven't read it yet. But, um, man, Rod, this has been a super, super fun interview. Uh, thank you so much uh, sure. for coming on. Uh, it's crazy to think we're at almost at the end of the hour already. Yeah. But let's, let's take a few minutes before we go. Um, if you could... Uh, you know, uh, just to remind people how they can keep up to date with what you're doing with uh, Bear County Bigfoot. Yeah, um, I'm on um, three major platforms. I'm on YouTube, uh, Instagram, and Facebook. Facebook, it's uh, Bear County Bigfoot. 
Um, you can look it up. It's 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 a private group. Uh, you know, I'm going to have to approve. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, that whole thing. Uh, I'm I'm very, I'm very, uh, I'm very active with my group uh, as far as the, the Facebook thing is concerned, Instagram and all that stuff, because um, I do realize that there are groups out there that are for fun and it's for novelty. And I get it. That's cool. If that's your aim, great. But, you know, I'm not trying to say that we're all serious, but at the same time, I try to protect my people mm-hmm. from, you know, some of the trollers and things like that. So I really try to filter that out. So Facebook, Bear County Bigfoot, Instagram, Bear County Bigfoot, you can follow. That's nothing private there. Uh, YouTube, Bear County Bigfoot as well. That's awesome. And I will have that uh, linked in the uh, show notes so just to to call out it's b e x a r so it's not the way that it sounds if you yeah. try to look for it without going in the show notes but it'll be in there yeah. but rod thank you so much for yeah. uh for coming on and chatting about uh san antonio bigfoot this has been a good time yeah. uh thanks again sir thank you so much i appreciate it Thanks for listening to the Bigfoot Society podcast. Please take a few minutes to review the show on iTunes five stars as it does help us get into the eyes and ears of more listeners on iTunes. Uh, That will help us just get bigger and bigger and get even better quality guests for future shows. Uh, Also, if you have any Bigfoot encounters or cryptid encounters, please send your stories and Uh, audio and photos whatever you've got over to bigfootsociety at gmail.com if you'd like to become more involved with bigfoot society and get some extra content we do have a patreon uh, where you can get all sorts of cool things for example for seven dollars a month you get extra bigfoot society content uh, usually interviews but other things as well you get a sweet membership card and a vinyl sticker that i sent you in the mail you get access to the Bigfoot Society After Show, which is an extra interview after the main interview with the weekly guest. And usually they are up for uh, Patreon members to be in that extra show segment with them and me. And you get to ask your uh, question live to them and get an answer from the guest, which as you've seen what guest we've had in the past, this could be a really big deal. There's also a private Discord where you can get involved with uh, talking to me one-on-one and the community there, and that's always a great time. You can find the Patreon at www.patreon.com forward slash the Bigfoot Society. Uh, We're very thankful for all our supporters that we have in so many different ways and appreciate uh, all our listeners coming back week after week to listen to more cryptozoology-based interviews. Uh, Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. The views and opinions expressed are those of the guest and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Bigfoot Society. Any content provided by our guests are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, individual, or anyone. Thank you. Hey, before you go, breaking news. I've been invited by the Van Meter Visitor Festival uh, September 24th of this year to speak. Uh, I'm super excited. It'll be my first speaking engagement. I'm going to be speaking on uh, specifically what happened to the Iowa Bigfoot Information Center. Uh, It's going to be a fun one. A lot of uh, fun information I've been doing about 1970s uh, Bigfoot researchers. So definitely... Come on over to beautiful Van Meter, Iowa on 924-2022, right outside of uh, West Des Moines, Des Moines, Central Iowa. $2 to get in, super worth it. There's a ton of other really great speakers there uh, this year. Uh, Laura Cram is going to be one of them. Um, You don't want to miss it. It's going to be a good time. Also, I'll be selling a uh, very unique design, festival only, uh, then it's not available anywhere else by Jonathan Dodd. Uh, my take of a uh, of an old uh, WrestleMania poster. So you have to go to at Bigfoot Society on Instagram and scroll back a little bit to see what I'm talking about. But uh, wow, it, it's it's gonna be a rocking T-shirt, and you're not gonna want to miss your chance to pick one of those up. So thanks again for. Uh, 
listening all, and uh, hope to see you at the Van Meter Visitor Festival in beautiful Van Meter, Iowa, 92422, uh, coming up quick. <laughs>